Hey everybody, welcome back to the Renaissance Woodworker. I'm your host, Shannon Rogers, and welcome into my shop. I've got a fun little project planned for us today. For a little more than a year, I've been using this little tool tote. Um, I, I built it because I wanted something small that I could take just a few tools up to the Stepping Stone Museum on weekends during the summer, and, and I was tired of bringing them in in plastic bags and little canvas totes and things like that. This was real simple just throw a couple things in. I've also been really shocked at just how many tools I could fit in it from several different back saws to a couple of planes, a bunch of chisels, all kinds of stuff. This is also great for carrying carving tools around and I've taken this uh, up to Maine on vacation with my carving tools several times now. Obviously, if you've watched the Woodwright shop at all, you'll see that it's kind of modeled after that open top tool tote that you see Roy carrying around all the time but it's quite a bit shorter and I can't really put full size hand saws in it. So today I wanted to go ahead and build that iconic tool tote that we see Roy Underhill carrying around everywhere. All we're gonna need is a couple of saws, maybe a jack plane, chisels, and some nails and a hammer. Uh, I'm gonna throw in this moving Philster plane from uh, Philly Planes, because I just got it and I want an excuse to, to play with it a little bit. That'll be used to create a couple rabbits, but this could be done with a saw and a chisel just as easily. As far as stock goes, I've got a already planed S4S piece of Western Red Cedar here. It's uh, nine inches wide and it's about 80 some inches long. I don't need quite that much, but I'll be able to make this whole thing out of that one board. So hang on tight. Let's get cutting. I want to start by cutting a 40 inch piece off of this board. I'm using a panel saw here because the finer pitch tooth works well in this already 3 quarter inch thick material. Now I'm going to take that 40 inch piece and rip it down the middle so I've got approximately 4.5 inch wide sides. Now I'm going to cut 10 inches off each of those pieces for the ends and I've got the four walls of my box. Now the longer 40 inch piece I want to resaw right down the middle I'm using my 36 inch frame saw here and it's just eating through this red cedar like it's not even there. So you want to make sure you flip it around and saw from both sides just as a preventative measure to keep your saw on that curve. Since it's moving so fast it can get away from you real quick and we don't have much material on either side of the curve. I love this saw. Every time I use it I'm just amazed at how well it works and how quickly it works. Now I'm just going to plane off the saw marks and you should end up with pieces uh, just a little under 3 8 inch thick. I think I came in about a 16th under that. I want to plane the bevel onto the top and bottom of three of the walls of the box. So I'm just gone with um, just 10 degrees here. It's really kind of an arbitrary amount. It doesn't have to splay that much. So I've used that marking gauge to mark the lowest extent and I'm planing down to that just to kind of get in the ballpark of my angle. And ideally, when I plane all the way up and touch the high side, I should be at that angle. And sure enough, I've met that angle. You just want to plane that on both sides, but in opposition to one another, so you get a parallelogram on the two short ends and one of the long ends. And there you can see that 10 degree angle. The long end, since it's so, the thickness is so little, it only takes just a couple of passes with my block plane to hit that number. Now I'm going to use that 10 degree angle and I'm going to scribe a line on the ends. Now here's where the compound butt joint comes into play. If I reference my bevel gauge along the face and run that line up the edge following the bevel, I'm not using regular square, I'm using the bevel along that already beveled edge, I get a line that I can connect on the opposite face and this creates a compound angle. And if you look at the square, you can see that angle is not plumb. It's ever so slightly off 90 degrees. So as I cut this, look at the reflection of the saw at the start of the cut. You can see how it's not 90 degrees. It angles outward ever so slightly. This is truly a compound angle cut. So I'm sawing angle uh, in the X direction and an angle in the Y direction here. Now my knife lines can reveal where I'm slightly away from that compound angle. So I'll just clean it up with a block plane. With the angle set and the bevel set on the short ends of this case, I can set it on the bench and use that to scribe the line on one side. One side is perfectly vertical. So this is just a simple angle at that 10 degrees and that's real easy to cut out. And then I can bring that back over to the bench and just set it up. 
that vertical side goes against your leg so it doesn't bump into you as you carry it. But now I can scribe the resultant angle on that beveled out other long side. And then I can solve that compound angle here at the bench. Now I'm gonna set my gauge to the thickness of the, sh the thin narrow sides and scribe it onto the end of the short ends here. I'll set my moving filister fence to that same depth and just double check it with a square. And then I'll set the depth of the cut to 3 8 of an inch, which is about half the thickness of these uh, end pieces. Now one thing to be sure of is that you reference the fence of the filister plane against that slight angle on the end of these compound angled short sides. That way we're cutting the rabbit in the proper orientation to that slightly beveled end. I've taken just a couple finishing nails and just driven them in to hold the box sides in place. I'm going to set it over the bottom panel and trace the opening here. Now this is the bottom of the panel so I want to use my 10 degree angle to angle up and out to create a slight taper to these. And then I can just saw them out, cross cutting and ripping until I have a panel that is beveled outward on three sides. Remember one side is still vertical. When I clean that up with the jointer, I can see I'm good to go. Now let's work on the handle. Grab the remainder of the board that we cross cut out way at the beginning and saw that 10 degree angle into the end. You may want to clean up some of the planar skip on this too. Let's set the length. Draw a line two inches down from the top of the handle. That marks the intersection of the top of the box with the handle. I can make a mark on the inside of the box and then square my line across. This is the shoulder of my tenon. Then I can add one and a half inches to that for the through tenon and saw it off to length. Again, these tenons are through tenons, total one and a half inches long. They start one inch down from the intersection of the top of the box and they're one and a half inches wide. So you lay those in with your bevel gauge. Then I'm gonna connect the center of the handle to that intersection with the top of the box on the ends and draw on a line. This creates the taper for my handle. Now just saw out my tenons. And again, this is a, you know, it's a, a simple angle. So if you are difficult or having trouble with it, you can set the piece in the vise so that that angle is now a plumb cut. And then just saw out the cheeks of this tenon and you'll expose this tenon. And you can see how it is actually angled to the board at that appropriate 10 degree angle so that it'll go through the sides. Now I'm just gonna saw out this handle taper. There is a flat at the top of the handle that's about six inches wide, and then it just slopes down an angle from there. You can kind of add your own flair to this if you want. I'll just clean it up and then kind of round everything over with my jack plane, just so that there are no sharp edges exposed up here. And I'm gonna drill through the top. Again, I'm centered this one and a half inches down from the top, or rather two inches down from the top. I'm gonna drill five holes and basically just chisel out in between to create the recess where my hand goes. And then I'll just round everything over, shape it nicely with a rasp here. So there's no sharp spots where I wanna grab on. Now I'm gonna lay in a line that is one inch down from the top and another one and, an inch, one and a half inches from there. Now trace the shape of the tenon and then square that line down and you'll end up with your mortise location, exactly where the tenon goes. I will drill out two holes using a 5 8 inch auger bit here and I'm drilling at that 10 degree angle. I've got my bevel gauge set as a reference right there. Now I can just chisel out the waist in between, square up the corners and I've got a completed mortise that is angled at 10 degrees as the tenon of the handle enters into the short sides of the tool tote. And let's get a test fit here. Comes in, slides all the way through, should have about a half inch exposed. Now I can assemble the sides and you've got the tote almost ready to go. I'm gonna set up one of the sides in my leg vise and just use my plane as kind of a balancing point. And I'm gonna drive in uh, cut nails here. This whole box is just nailed together. So I will pre-drill for these cut nails. I'm working right on the end of this relatively soft wood, so I definitely don't want to split it out. Drive those nails in so that the wedge works with the grain, and I'll put uh, about three to four in every single corner. I'm actually driving these nails in at a slight angle. I'll also nail in from the other side to create an interlocking joint. Now, as I worked through this project and putting more and more nails, and I realized this soft wood doesn't really need pre-drilling, 
So I went to a birdcage all just to get the hole started and prevent splintering in the thinner side pieces and just work my way around corner by corner installing all these nails. Now the bottom on this, I'm gonna put nails on the vertical side only because the natural wedge shape will hold it in place. And then I just want to flush up the tops. You don't really have to worry about the width too much of these because you just flush them up later. So that completes the uh, tool tote. And I've got so much space in here. I can put, you know, both my panel saws and I could throw a, a brace in here, box of nails, my jack plane. I could even fit a joiner plane in here if I wanted. Mallet, hammer, couple of clamps, block planes, chisels, bevel gauge, marking gauge, another marking gauge, just lots and lots of space for stuff. And the vertical side here means that I can carry it and it will ride you know, right up against my body. So I'm not having to extend my arm out with a heavy load, which is really nice. And the tapered beveled bottom means that it can't physically slide out the bottom. The weight on the bottom here is wedging it in place. Plus it allows that panel to float. It can expand and contract. And as it expands, the bevel just kind of slides it up into the case, making the case not quite as deep. So here's my tool tote. It's uh, exact same design as this one, but definitely a step up in carrying capacity. So take my whole shop on the road and get some stuff done. Hope you guys have enjoyed this and uh, we'll see you next time.